Well, welcome to the channel. This is going to be a quick little short install video. I'm taking out my old lead acid batteries from the trailer and I'm putting some new ones that they sent me. Some AGM. Uh, they're by SunCycle. Go Power in other words that makes them. So they might be a little bit better quality but we'll still run into the same issue with capacity. So I think come summertime or maybe late fall next year I think it's time for the lithium upgrade. So, so far what we're going to need for tooling is, uh, looks like a Phillips just to take that uh, steel harness off. I'm going to show you all that here shortly. Okay, so the purpose of today's video is I've looked on the uh, OGT site, off-grid trailer website, and I don't see anything on taking the old batteries out and any installs on anything new other than uh, lithium-ion. I don't imagine it's going to be a tough job. I think it's pretty straightforward by the looks of it. I've got Phillips. Another Phillips here, then I got another Phillips here and here on the outside. I'll show you that. So it's this one and this one that have to come out. Now you might, if you're like me, re-silicone the heads just so that you're not getting any moisture in there. I'll probably do that after I'm done. But let's get started on this. Make sure your AC is unplugged, okay, from the house. This way you're not playing around with any other power. Uh, then we're going to take the steel compartment off. We're going to remove this. Then we're going to remove our power cables first because they'll be the closest to us to access. And we're just going to make sure that this is not touching anything metal. You know, we'll hold on to it until we get the negative off and then we should be good after that. This here is for my solar. Uh, <clears throat> just for my energy charger, solar charger. And it takes the temperature of the battery. Let's get started. Okay, so far I got those ones out. I put some WD-40 on them and I sprayed a little bit on here. These ones here are very tough. I had to get a socket with a Phillips bit on it versus the screwdriver. It was just too long and wouldn't break those screws loose. Okay, just a real quick update. Got the screws out. So they're out of the pan and they're out of the base here. I just put this under here. I thought it was gonna, you know, drop in, but I noticed they actually thought of that ahead of time. They got these big blocks here that sit down so that you're not gonna lose your metal onto the post. Good idea. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna pull that out right now. So as it goes in life, nothing's ever easy to do. Um, they really screwed this shit down. So they got a screw here, a screw here, a screw down back here. You got the one, two there that I showed you and you got two on the back side way down deep there. So not easy by any stretch of the imagination. Now I just coiled this up just to lift this off because this does not pull out, which I find a poor design because if you had to get at these for whatever reasons, you want to be able to get in this pretty quick, but it's not allowing me to pull this out. Even like if I go up full, like you got to still watch that you're not shorting anything out, right? And uh, I don't know, might with some finagling, but I can't do that with uh, no hands. So I'm going to have to try and see if I can get it, get it out. If not, I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just pull the batteries out without it. So they ain't pissing around. I got one battery out. Now I got to take this bracket off and I'm going to slide this over. I got it sort of wedged up on the back there. Just got to watch that no metals touching the posts here, especially to ground. So we don't want to have any spark. You can cover these two with black tape or whatever, just to take that part of it out. And I'll probably do that. Just go grab some tape and I'll put it on there. Just lessens the chance it's sparking in your face. Okay. So I got all the batteries out. I noticed, if you look at the end of the hose here, I don't know if I can see that or not, there's chipping of paint. So that tells me the batteries are rubbing through as they're moving, even though it's in here pretty damn good. I'm gonna use some of this old drainage hose that I don't use anymore. It's nice and thin. And what it's gonna do is act as just a little bit of a barrier when it's sliding around in here. I don't think it'll be any detriment because there's no room to move in here. They've got this bracket fastened down every which way to Sunday. So I'm just going to just put these here for something for the battery to sit on and keep it out of the water. I noticed some water in here, but uh, not much you can do about that when it's snowing and your doors are open. But anyhow, that's where we'll go with it. I'm going to use two per battery and I'll just lay them out here. Okay, so I, you can see just the blue part here to that hose that I put in. It just keeps it from rubbing on the frame on below 
and you can see it just barely in the corner there. So I just put one on each side, keep it nice and stable. I think we'll be good to go. I taped the positives just in case something falls down. I used a bungee cord just to hold it up and out of my way while I'm lifting the battery into the cell. Next, I'll put this joiner piece back on. That'll keep this battery isolated and then I'll squeeze the next one in and then we'll do the connections. I just put a quite a bit of silicone around the head so that when it drops down the hole it kind of fills the top and keeps the water from coming in and dust. So, and keeps them from wiggling loose on you. So I would always do this. Okay, so I got both batteries in place. I got that center joiner in. And I got the gasketing material that I'm using, which is that drainage hose that I mentioned. So I got two strips, one on each side of the battery to support it. And just to keep it out of any moisture, you know, and rubbing on the metal, I don't want that to ever arc through. It'd be a fire waiting to happen, so. Anyways, it should have been on a rubber mat, is what I would have done. Nice thin rubber mat, but you gotta make sure you drill out all the holes for it too. So that's why I went with the uh, hose gasket, but it'll work. And like I said, always keep it up because I taped these off. And like I said, I'm glad I did just because sliding it, sliding it in at this angle, you can still catch the, uh, the guard, the shield. So the next thing I'm going to do now is try and get back there and do these uh, negative connections. So the pigtails that they use here are a little shy, but I kind of bent the lug backwards onto the back of the posts so they fit properly. And these ones are onto the front here. I taped off the positive once again, and that's kind of what it looks like in the back there. So I think we're good to go. I'm just going to see that this all clears. It should. So I'm going to try and put this back together and uh, we'll close up this video. Well, it looks like we got all of them in place. All the connections are done, the battery's in. I put uh, silicone back on the screws as I threaded them in. Same thing in all the bottom ones. So I think that's a wrap for the battery install. It's not overly all complicated, just you got to remember to cover those positive terminals on the battery. But uh, yeah, no, I think it's pretty good. I just uh, also put on my it's RTD, a little thermal uh, couple here to read up for the battery temperature. So I just chose one battery since they are paralleled and uh, just put some silicone over top of it so it actually holds it down. After that, it dries, it'll be there until I need it to come off. And other than that guys, that's a quick wrap on a battery install on lead acid batteries into the Expedition 2.0. Thank you.